Hello everybody and welcome back. Um, quite a serious report tonight and I have tried to tone it down as best as I can because it is a little bit distressing um, but hopefully it's it's not too bad and, and you'll be able to listen to the report. Now a man's been charged today, his name is Reynard Sinaga and he's committed 190 serial attacks on men in the city centre. Could he be the Manchester pusher? And I will explain more as I go along. Today, I asked myself the question, why has my local newspaper, the Manchester Evening News, not run the story on the horrifying case of a man who's been arrested and was today convicted of over 190 male sexual assaults here in Manchester City Centre? The man who lives directly in the area where a number of the Manchester pusher victims were found along the canal system and a number of men who remain missing were last seen in the area. The apartment complex where Renard lives is on Princess Street and it's credited as having lovely views of the canals as the complex is built directly next to the watercourse. Now, Reynard Sinaga was known as Posh Spice. Now, yesterday he was charged in four cases that have been kept secret until today. In the four separate hearings, which have taken place behind closed doors over the last three months, every national newspaper has run and headlined this story. It's been on the front page since this morning, all across the UK and worldwide. Yet the largest newspaper to cover Greater Manchester has run with its headline on reports of a man who may have been seen with a gun, might have been on a motorbike, reported by people in nearby Salford. No mention of Reynard Sinaga, who lured his victims back to his Manchester flat before spiking them with sedatives and filming himself assaulting many of them repeatedly for hours on end. One ordeal lasted eight hours and a number of his mainly heterosexual victims are aged between 17 and 36. Now that is the age range of many of the pusher victims. Now most of them were not even aware that they'd been subjected to the appalling attacks until the police informed them of this. An avid churchgoer, Sinaga, a University of Manchester graduate, kept some of the men's belongings as trophies and sent chilling texts after several of the traumatising assaults, basically bragging about what he'd done to his friends. Before one incident, he was captured on CCTV in the early hours, running out of a building and slinking around the streets, hunting for lone, drunk young men around nightclubs. He used his non-threatening demeanour to dupe the men, many of whom thanked him for his kindness as he'd offered them a place to stay or a meal to eat or somewhere to ring a taxi or charge the phone from and they thought he was a good Samaritan. One man said that he'd felt guilty about imposing himself on him. Thankfully, he was today sentenced to 30 years behind bars after being convicted of 159 offences and that is just for the period between January 2015 and May 2017. So that's just a two-year period, 159 offences. However, Greater Manchester Police believe there may be at least another 190 potential victims of Sinaga. But of that figure, they were only able to identify 70 of those individuals. One victim said, I will never forget the day the police came to see me. I did not know why they needed to see me, but I can say I was absolutely devastated to hear that I'd been a victim of Sinago. Another added, I could recall the events of the evening the police were talking about, but I had no memory of any of the offences committed against me due to my complete lack of memory. Now, the judge who sentenced Sinago said, you are an evil serial predator and you've preyed upon young men who came into the city centre wanting nothing more than a good night out with their friends. One of your victims described you as a monster and the scale and enormity of your offending 
confirms this as an accurate description. In one harrowing picture from inside the flat, Sinaga's blood can be seen smeared on the door, which was as a result of a struggle he had with his final victim, and that struggle left him seriously injured. Another photograph also shows a collection of alcohol bottles, including rum and vodka and wine next to two shot glasses. Police do not believe he had any permanent flatmates during his offending period and he had the flat to himself, but he would have had people unofficially stay there for periods of time. Now, Sinaga's relentless campaign came to an end, as I said, just before 6am on the 2nd of June 2017 when his 18-year-old victim woke up mid-assault and managed to get away with his attacker's white iPhone 4. At first, the police treated the incident as a robbery and assault committed by the victim upon Sinago. But on examining the phone, they quickly realised their mistake. But the victim had to urge them to look at the phone. Now, the young man who escaped beat Sinaga severely and left him badly beaten, which some would say, including myself, was nothing more than he deserved. Although described as a teenager, the lad was a six foot three rugby player who bravely brought the series of horrific attacks to an end. Now, when the Greater Manchester Police finally examined Sinaga's multiple, multiple digital devices that they found within the flat, they discovered 329 terabytes of extremely graphic material, equivalent to around 250 DVDs or 300,000 photographs, depicting assaults, as I said, lasting in some cases for around eight hours. Now, Sinaga comes from a very wealthy family. In fact, he is supported here in the UK by his generous parents. And I find it strange that... The rents in Manchester are astronomical, so he's clearly got money around him and I find it very strange that he had an iPhone 4 on him and that's the only phone he's got to his name. I think there will be a number of much newer handsets used for the most devious of, devious of his crimes, no doubt, and hidden away very carefully by him. Now, whenever his drug and groggy victims were rousing, Sinaga can be seen pushing them back to the floor to continue the assault or snatching away his phone to avoid, you know, avoid suspicion. He's seen on some occasions quickly turning out the light so that the victim will lull back to sleep before he continues his vile attacks. And it is suspected the serial rapist may have committed offences elsewhere in the city, as images from some video clips recovered from his phone did not match the city centre address where he lived when he was arrested. Now, there could be many occasions when he returned to someone else's premises to commit further acts, leaving whilst they slept, perhaps. There are hundreds of hotels and Airbnb sites across the city centre. Manchester also has a huge homeless population who may also have become his victims. The area of Princess Street where he lives is not out of the red light district and it has had a seedy reputation from as early as the 1920s. Known for its nightlife, and it's, e it's an easy place to pick up someone, as the people in Manchester say. And it's visited by thousands and thousands of visitors each week. There's also a 24-hour open-door policy on many of the drinking establishments. Piccadilly Gardens, which in American terms would be around about three blocks away, is now a no-go area at night for most people in the city centre. There are so many homeless and drug users and alcoholics. It's just not worth putting yourself at risk. Now, Sinagra has lived in Manchester from at least 2006 when he started his college courses. He fits the typical profile for a serial offender. He's the correct age. He has no living partner, so he can please himself once his front door's shut. He can come and go as he pleases and he could be out all night. He wouldn't rouse suspicion. He had easy access to dating websites and to the bars and the clubs and the pubs, so he had easy access to victims. He lives within a few hundred yards of the canal system. In fact, if he walked out of the building he lives in, the canal is right there, just a few steps away. 
We also know that many of the date rape drugs do cause death and overdose. So attacks of this nature also call de cause deaths. What if we speculate that out of the 190 cases the police know of, with the only identified 70 males, what if those other 120 males say one or two of those males may have already been pulled from the canal? Now, Sinago has been seen on CCTV outside many of the area's busy nightclubs where most of the so-called pusher victims were last seen. The pusher could be connected to over 90 deaths in the area. And these deaths have never been investigated as a series of crimes. The deaths are usually declared accidental or of no suspicious circumstances. Many parents and partners of the missing and the deceased have begged police to look into a connection in the cases, but that has yet to happen. This is the same police force that is also responsible for not recording a phone call in one of the pusher cases where the victim is in contact, it, in contact with the 999 call operator who can hear screams and howls. Out of every automatically recorded call in the whole of Greater Manchester, that was the only call that did not record that night. Now the police refused to comment on that. There are a number of scenarios that could account for many of the deaths along the canal. Did Singer pick up someone who suddenly became suspicious or wary of him? Did a scuffle break out close to his apartment? And his victims already heavily intoxicated. He could have been easily pushed or manoeuvred into the waterway. There aren't any barriers or walls or any kind, making for a very quick and easy disposal and a very quick walk into his business building. Now, Sinaga could have carried a simple water bottle, enabling him to offer a drink to an intoxicated victim. You know, yeah, drink some water. Within seconds of meeting them, he could have had them under in control. He could have rendered them defenceless. Too large of a swallow or too many a drop may have caused an untimely death. Although he is quoted as saying, one drop is usually enough. Now, this could be the amount that he has perfected over time, and I would say that it was. I would imagine it was um, trial and error in the beginning. So what about his early crimes? Did any of them go dramatic, drastically wrong? Any male pulled from the waterway may not have any traces of the drug by the time they were examined by the coroner, as it dissipates quite quickly. When we think of the closeness of his nest compared to the dumping site, it's almost as if he chose that flat for that exact reason. When we look at the statistics when calculating anything, what is reported is only ever a fraction of the genuine figure. So 190 victims could be much higher. As we know, serial offenders do not slack off as time goes by. In fact, in most cases, the behaviour escalates. Fred West, for instance, was killing for around 35 years and he accumulated at least 12 victims that we know of. But the figure is thought to be much higher. Even one kill in a year would give him a total of around 36 victims, which I think is probably much closer to the actual figure. Some serial offenders start in their early teens or the early 20s, which could make Sinaga someone who has offended for over a 20-year period. As a well-travelled young pampered gent, he could have victims on an international level. From 2012, he commuted monthly to the University of Leeds as part of his studies for a PhD. So if we only calculate Sinaga's length of stay in Manchester as, say, around 14 years, 190 assaults that we know of would mean that he would have been abusing around every 26 days, so about once a month. He was clearly out most evenings, if the reports are true, so it could suggest that we may yet find out not only is he a serial abuser, he may also be responsible for a number of the male victims who have gone missing within those years around his premises. 
There are hundreds of unreported missing in Manchester due to its large transient population. We have lots and lots of young runaways. We have lots of ex-services that we're not looking after and they're out there on the streets. There is no credible mental health service in Manchester so many many poor souls end up out there on the streets the list is endless and that's before we start on anyone that comes to the country illegally and has nowhere to stay um it's not the Manchester that it was in the 1970s when this area was very very popular with the working class lads who would go and drink there um as I say there are just the victim poo is extensive and anyone that lives in a large major city will understand what I'm talking about there are so many people out there who only have themselves that if they disappeared or just people just think they've walked off the face of the earth and that's it you know they're done there are hundreds and hundreds of unidentified males in graveyards all across the UK um, and as there are females of course now all of that and yet there's no investigation that we know of into matching the missing and deceased men found in the canals to the videos on Singer's phone. He could also have other devices the police do not know about that could contain thousands of other victims. Hopefully I'm wrong on this, but I don't think I am. And hopefully we will not repeat the mistakes made in the past where offenders of serious crimes are released to their country of birth after a matter of months. Um, and this has happened on a number of occasions in cases that happened close to the city centre. There was a case a number of years ago that stands out with me, where a young student was attacked and stabbed by a gentleman. I use that term very widely, um, who stabbed her for no reason. He was a complete stranger to her. And a lady, uh, a middle-aged lady, in her late 50s, had to pull her into the car and he attacked the both of them. And unfortunately, the young lady died. And he served a number of months. And he was allowed to go back to his um, country of origin. And, and that was it. And it, he got less than somebody would get for a common assault. So, hopefully now, the police will increase the patrols in the area. Now, we're told the area is heavy police as it is, and there's CCTV everywhere. Yet this happened under the very noses of the police and the CCTV operators. He didn't stand out as unusual. He fitted in with the people in that area. So you wouldn't pick him up on CCTV unless really you saw a scuffling, you know, something suspicious or something like that. He didn't stand out as unusual. But how many times do you hear that about your average serial killer? Oh, I thought he was an absolutely lovely gent. Oh, he, you know, Nigel lives over the road. Didn't realise he had 32 bodies in the, you know, the backyard. That's always the way it happens. You know, he was no trouble. He was a lovely neighbour. <sighs> Not all establishments, unfortunately, in Manchester City Centre, care about a patron once they pass through that door. There have been cases where people have been attacked in view of the premises. And for years and years, men vanish in the city centre and nothing is ever really done about it. And I'm sure if I looked into attacks on females in the area, the numbers would be staggering. Hopefully, eventually, all the males on Synagas devices will be identified and they will be given justice and helped with the burden they now have to carry. I, for one, join the throng of the victims' families and I urge Greater Manchester Police to take a serious look at any links there could be between Sinago and the pusher victims. It could bring some answers for the family. We all have to learn from this, I think. If you know Singer or you are worried that you may have come into contact with him, there is a police hotline to ring and you can remain completely anonymous. You can speak to them confidentially and I urge you to do that. And the number is 0800 092 0410. And that's from inside the UK. If you're out there abroad, the number is 0200 
0707-158-0124. If you are in need of support from specialist agencies, please call 0800-056-0154 from within the UK and 0207-158-0124. From abroad. So until next time, thank you very much for joining me. Good night.